When faced with a pupil of five millimeters or smaller, many surgeons hesitate to perform phacal emulsification due to the difficulty of visualizing the anterior capsulotomy and the risk of posterior capsule tears. To reduce the risk of complications, many phaco surgeons routinely use pupil enlarging techniques for small pupil cases. Small, partial sphincterotomies are preferred rather than large sphincterotomies, which may distort the pupil, cause bleeding, increase the blood aqueous barrier breakdown, require suturing, promote posterior synechia, and possibly lead to iris retraction syndrome. Relatively complication-free surgery in small pupil cases can be achieved with nucleofractous phacoemulsification techniques. Due to the limitation of the size of the pupil and the capsule opening, I've developed a slight variation on the traditional sculpting method I've been employing with the nucleofractous techniques. I call this modification downslope sculpting. By nudging the lens inferiorly, with the second instrument, the upper part of the lens nucleus can be sculpted deeply, parallel and close to the posterior capsule. This allows the surgeon to reach the posterior pole of the lens very early for effective fracturing. The technique begins with a shallow trench or trough sculpted slightly to the right of and just past the center of the lens nucleus. The lens is stabilized with a second instrument. Further sculpting of the upper portion of the lens can be accomplished at this point or after the first fracture. Nudging the loosened lens inferiorly with the second instrument, downslope sculpting is accomplished going very deeply to the posterior pole of the lens. Once the second instruments are deep in the center of the lens, fracturing is accomplished, pushing to the right with a phaco tip and stabilizing to the left with a spatula. The lens will usually split from the center to the periphery. After sculpting more of the upper portion of the nucleus, the surgeon then burrows deeply and creates a second crack that intersects with the first, isolating a pie-shaped section of the nucleus. The isolated pie-shaped section can then be either emulsified or left in place as a third crack is made in a similar fashion. The remaining right-hand section of the nucleus is then maneuvered with the second instrument and brought to the mid-pupillary zone, and a final split is made after impaling the tip with a short burst of ultrasound and breaking away a section with the spatula. Alternatively, after sculpting the upper portion of the nucleus, it can be stabilized with the phaco tip and then the spatula pushed inferiorly to create this split and then the inferior portion of the nucleus can be divided into sections. We will now demonstrate these techniques in first a five millimeter pupil and then a two and a half millimeter pupil. Here you see the sculpting begun with the second instrument stabilizing Hydrodissection is important in these cases so that the nucleus can be nudged inferiorly within the capsule and so that rotation can be easily accomplished. You see now the second instrument nudging the nucleus inferiorly. We're just past the center of the nucleus, even though it is close to the iris. And now we will accomplish the fracturing here using a cross-action technique because this nucleus is quite dense. On SFET footage, we will see the two instruments causing this fracture with little distortion of the capsular bag. The lens is rotated and additional fracturing accomplished sometimes requiring additional sculpting to maintain depth in the lens. The fracturing is facilitated by deep sculpting in the central part of the lens. If there is a nuclear plate left in the center of the lens posteriorly, the fracturing does not easily extend to the posterior pole of the lens. You can see that the 
Fragments were left in place to maintain the capsular bag, maintain the stability of the nucleus, to facilitate the fracturing. Once the fracturing is complete, then the fragments are brought, sometimes being divided further, as you see, using the two instruments as the section comes to the center of the pupil. When just one or two fragments remain, the posterior capsule can come up to the port, so one must be more careful using lower power and lower flow rates. And as the last section is emulsified, the cyclodialysis tip should be kept under the phaco tip to prevent the capsule from coming to the port unexpectedly. Here we see the epinuclear bowl coming freely now to the port. This case, a 2.5 millimeter case, illustrates the extent of the applicability of this technique or phaco emulsification in very small pupils without enlarging the pupil. Nudging the nucleus inferiorly, one can sculpt very deeply in the center without the tip of the phaco going blindly under the iris. So the downslope sculpting allows this deep central sculpting. This is edited down slightly. The phaco time here is 3.4 minutes. And the total energy in this case is only 0.99, indicating that we're working at about 35% average phaco power. So it may take longer, but there isn't much turbulence and much phaco energy utilized. Note how little the phaco tip moves and how much the second instrument is used to maneuver the material to the phaco tip. Certainly, enlarging pupils that are this size adds safety to the procedure, but I think this case illustrates that with experience, it can be accomplished without enlarging the pupil except for those pupils that have fibrotic rings and cannot be distended with the instruments, and particularly cannot distend to allow the lens to be implanted through the small pupil. But this pupil will stretch. So it's factors of fibrosis and ring-like elements of the pupil that dictate whether the pupil should be enlarged in my experience. Here we see a five millimeter lens now being placed within the capsular bag. One can stretch this pupil and verify that the lens is started into the capsular bag and also that the last loop is in the capsular bag before being released. I prefer a five millimeter round lens but many times we have to take a 5x6 lens because of availability.